Today we're going to discuss PGSTAT activity. Now, when you try to monitor Postgres, PGSTAT activity is one of the tools you will be using on a regular basis. And in this lecture, we're going to see what PGSTAT activity is and how to use it when you're troubleshooting various query issues. Primarily, you use this PGSTAT activity to do a live troubleshooting, okay? Let's say somebody complains that there's something going on in the production and you log into Postgres server and immediately you use this PGSTAT activity to look up the queries. What's going on with the queries? Whether or not there are any wait states, how the queries are executing, and how the slow queries are actually responding, okay? Live on the system if you want to see what's happening, right? You can use PGSTAT activity. In PGSTAT activity, there are some important columns or fields that we need to understand. One is this one, that ID, which means OID of the database. In Postgres, each database has a unique OID, and this is retrieved from this column, okay? And then that name is nothing but a database name. Let's say you have 10 databases. You may want to know the queries of a particular database. Then you can filter by this column. And then the PID is the process ID of the back end. Username is the username that is connected to the database. Let's say you have a different user for different applications. Then you can filter by the username. And then the client address is very important. This is the IP address of the client connected to the back end. Let's say there's a spike in load and you want to understand where the connections are coming from. You can actually filter by client address. More important columns, the back end start. This is the time when the process was started for the client's back end. This is the time when the client connected to the server. When a client connects to the server, back end server, the time start. And then it can run several queries, okay? A connection can run several queries, but this is the actual back end start time or the client connection start time. And then the XX start is the time when this process current transaction was started. This is related to the current transaction. You want to know when the current transaction started. Basically, you can use XX start column. And then a query start time is the time when the currently active query was started. If you want to know when the current query started, you can refer to this column. And state change is the column when the state changed. For example, the earliest state was idle and now it became active or when it went into the wait state. This field gives us the exact time when the state changed. And then the client host name is the host name of the connected client as reported by reverse DNS lookup of client address. The client address gives the IP address. This one is a reverse lookup of that. These are the important fields in PG stat activity. When there are issues, you normally refer to one or more of these columns to get the appropriate information that you need. All right. Now, let's go into some real-time issue. Now that we have seen the important columns, let us go through several scenarios. I want to know the total number of connections. I log on to the system and I want to know what are the total number of connections at this point of time. And I can run this query, which is select count star from PG stat activity. This will give us the total number of connections at any given point of time. But I'm more interested to a uh, group by client because there is a spike in a load. The average number of connections is 200 and suddenly we saw a spike of 400. I want to know where the connections are coming from and what caused this spike. In that case, we typically do this group by client address. So select count star. Okay, client address from PG stat activity group by client address 
So let's say one particular client is sending more than 150 connections out of the 40 or 50 clients that are connected. There's something wrong. You can talk to that application team about that client address and what's happening with that client. You can troubleshoot that. Or if there is a long running query originating from a particular client, you can give that to the app team and see why there's a long running query running from that client's IP. The other scenario is you want to know the number of connections from a particular client. There are 20 plus clients connected to the database and you want to know the number of connections of a particular client. You can use this query, select count star as client total from PG stat activity, where a client address is this particular client address. I want to know the total number of connections. So you give this filter where client address. These are some of the scenarios. Let's look at more of them. Of course, number of connections grouped by database. Let's say you have multiple databases and you have 10 databases and you want to know what are the number of connections for each database. You can do select count star that name from PG stat activity group by that name, which means we are grouping by database name. It will give you the count of databases. And if you want to get the number of connections tied to a particular database, you can run this query and in where clause, you can give that name, whatever database name you're trying to retrieve for. And then the number of connections grouped by user. Let's say there are so many users that are connected to the back end, and you're particularly interested to know which user has more connections and which user is causing the load. You can do a group by username and you get more information by username. More information scenarios, how to get long running queries. Basically, how do you get long running queries? Let's say there are so many queries and connections going on and you want to know and identify the long running queries. How do you identify the long running queries? Basically, this is the query you want to use where state is not equal to idle and then order by the runtime. Here, if you see, we're doing a current timestamp query start as runtime and we are ordering by that. And then we are also filtering by where state not equal to idle. This will give you all the long running queries. The long running queries may be active or they may be in the waiting state. Let's say there is a lock weight or some kind of weight. Still, they're counted as long running queries because they're still running. You can get the information about the slow queries or long running queries currently in your system using this query. And then you want to get a list of the processes where the transaction time exceeds five minutes. Let's say you're going by transaction time and you want to get the list of processes which exceed five minutes. You can use this select that name, PID, application name, state, query, transaction start from PG stat activity, where now minus XX start is greater than five minutes, which means that basically you're getting all the processes when the transaction exceeds five minutes. There may be some long running transactions in the sense the transaction started, but it did not commit. So you want to know those kind of scenarios. In those cases, this XX underscore start is very useful to know the long running transactions. And then get a list of queries in waiting state. Sometimes the queries can go into lock weight or other kinds of weight. And you can use this query. This particular PG blocking pids is very useful. And then using this query, you get the blocked query and who is blocking it and other details. Also, there is this very nice query that filters for all the weight event types. Basically, you want to know the waiting queries and what is causing the weights, right?
you can use this query and you can get more details about that. Now that we have seen various columns, important columns and various queries, different types of queries, we have seen as theory. Now we're going to do the demo where we're actually going to run those queries to simulate a weight scenario and locking scenario and see how we can use PG stat activity to know more about the problem. Let's stop it here and do the demo. Okay. So I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Take care. Cloud DB school, either we adapt or we slowly fade away. So what's happening in the DBA space? The DBA role is evolving. Either we adapt or we slowly fade away. This is correct. So what about this quote here? DBA role is dying, rip DBA. This is wrong. DBA role is not going away. There's nothing to worry about. Social proof. Jonathan Lewis, a world-class Oracle expert, I'm worried about the future of DBAs. This is a quote taken from the internet. Either we adapt or we slowly fade away. I was a DBA too, but made the transition to DBE, so it's an evolution. This is a quote taken from a DBA. Major technology trends are reshaping the DBA role at many organizations. This is another quote we found from another article on the internet. Oracle and SQL Server DBAs should learn Postgres, MySQL, Ansible, RDS, Aurora, DynamoDB, Automation, etc. RDS Aurora needs database engineers, especially when there are many RDS instances. A Google search for death of the DBA or DBA title dying will yield something like this. This is an example, an excerpt of Google search results. So how do we evolve? Learn open source, Postgres and MySQL. Learn RDS. Learn Aurora. Learn DynamoDB. Cloud migration techniques. GCP Postgres and MySQL services. Azure Postgres and MySQL services. Automation using Ansible, Terraform, and more. These are some of the technologies you should learn in order to evolve. How Cloud DB School can help you. Currently, you can learn the below by enrolling today. More topics will be added on a monthly basis. Postgres, RDS, Aurora, DynamoDB, cloud migration using SCT and DMS, and you can prepare for the AWS database specialty exam. Again, more will be added each month. Here are the courses you can enroll in today for Postgres. Postgres architecture, Installation, RPM, and source, user access, backup and recovery, streaming replication, PG Bouncer, PG Pool, monitoring PG stat statements and PG stat activity, monitoring PG Badger, and monitoring Prometheus and Grafana based. For Aurora, you can learn creating Aurora cluster, Aurora cluster with Terraform, connectivity issues, restoring from on prem server to Aurora cluster, Aurora backups and restores. Monitoring Aurora Cluster, Aurora Global Cluster, Aurora Cloning, Aurora Backtracking, and Aurora Serverless. For RDS, you can learn creating RDS using Console, CLI, or Terraform, RDS Backup and Restores, RDS HA, Multi AZ versus Read Replicas, Managing RDS, Stop, Start, and Modify, RDS Monitoring, Events and Alarms, RDS versus Aurora. For DynamoDB, we offer DynamoDB Introduction, DynamoDB Consistency Levels, Querying DynamoDB, DynamoDB Backup and Recovery, DynamoDB Global Tables, and DynamoDB TTL. We also offer database migration courses with SCT and DMS, showing you how to use those different demos. If you use Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres, TB2, or Sybase, any of these courses that we offer may be helpful to you. Again, we will be offering new courses every month. So the question is, why should you pay $4.99 per year to enroll? We offer our services for a one-time fee of $499 US per year to enroll, roughly $41 per month. With this, you get access to all of our current courses to enroll in, along with any that will be added within your year of enroll. You'll get access to Postgres, RDS, Aurora, DynamoDB, Cloud Migration, and AWS DB Specialty courses today. More courses will be added on a monthly basis and all new content will be available to you as we publish it. Automation courses are coming soon. You can check our CloudDB blogs to see our previous work in this space. The DBA role is evolving. Accept the change and start learning and acquiring new skills.
Either we adapt or we slowly fade away. Here are some of the most frequently asked questions from our website. Can I get a free trial? Will I be able to clear AWS database specialty exam after enrolling? I'm an Oracle SQL Server DB2 Sybase MySQL slash other DBA. How will I benefit from your courses? How will I contact you if I need more information? Answers to all these questions and more can be found on our FAQ page on our website. And remember, if you need any additional information, feel free to reach out to us.